Hello guys, so finally after 4 to 5 months I have completed my PC build and it took me 4 to 5 months because I was buying each component in a month or 2 components in a month so that's why it was like I, I bought SSD first then I bought graphics card then I bought motherboard then I bought the hard disk then I bought something else then I bought something else and that is how I completed my PC build because it was not possible for me to buy all the components at one go so finally I have got all the components and the build is completely up and running and this build is specifically a video editing build so that's why the parts are uh, according to the video editing build uh, so that's why you might not see graphics card of high end and you might see processor uh, costly or something like that so in this video I'll tell you guys uh, which components I bought and why I bought those components and I'll give you two suggestions or uh, three suggestions because your budget might be lower than mine or it might be higher than mine so you can buy that component and you can continue with the build and guys let me tell you that I was not supposed to spend thousand dollars or sixty thousand rupees on building this PC actually I am completely completely out of my budget so that is why I had to compensate on some parts so yeah I'll explain that as soon as we talk about each part so let's get into the part list so let's start with one of the most important parts of the build and that's the processor so here I went with the i7-4790 not the K variant because I was completely out of budget and frankly speaking 4790 is exactly similar to Xeon 1231 version 2 the only difference is that in the 4790 you get inbuilt graphics and in the Xeon 1231 version 2 you do not get inbuilt graphics and if you get a graphics card like separate graphic card then uh, you don't have to worry about that also because if you have separate graphics card and a Xeon then they will work same as i7 and a graphics card because when you use graphic card and i7 anyways the inbuilt graphics of the i7 are not used unless and until you don't select and use the option of using uh, inbuilt graphics of the i7 so the extra thing that you get with the 4790 is that turbo boost is up to 4 GHz with the 4790 whereas with the Xeon it is limited to 3.6 GHz and uh, overclocking the Xeon might be a little tough but overclocking the 4790 will be a little easy than the Xeon so yes as I said if you have same budget as mine then go for 4790 rather I'll say that go for 4790k because uh, after paying 2000 or 3000 extra or it's like 50 dollar maybe 50 30 to 50 dollars extra you get unlock variant of the 4790 and overclocking that variant is like very very easy so if you have budget of buying 4790k then surely go for 4790k only and if you have less budget than mine uh, like if you have less budget then go for Xeon 1231 version 2 which is priced less than the 4790 but it still works very very good uh, it's a server chip actually but at 3.6 gigahertz 4 cores and 8 threads yes 8 threads uh, the performance is very very good with the Xeon 2 and I bought 4790 because uh, I got it at discount and I was not getting 4790k at discount so that's why I got 4790 if I would have got 4790k then 110% at the 2000% I would have bought the 4790k and if your budget allows you to buy 4790k then go for it so after processor now let's talk about RAM and I bought Corsair Vengeance 2 sticks of 4GB and why I bought 2 sticks of 4GB because I wanted dual channel memory and due to some reason if one uh, stick goes bad then I can run the whole PC at uh, one stick and uh, fortunately I am having 12GB of RAM in my current video editing build and I made it 12GB of RAM by using the old RAM that I had in my earlier PC because the old RAM is clocked at 1333MHz so that's why uh, in a PC you cannot run uh, RAMs at different speeds so because of this it will always adjust with the RAM which is having lowest clock speed and that was my old RAM at 1333MHz so that's why all the setup is running at 1333MHz and I do not mind uh, them running at 1.3GHz because having 12GB of RAM at 1333MHz is surely better than having 8GB of RAM at 1600MHz so I went with that but after some time when I'll sell my old PC then I'll have to remove that uh, 4GB of stick uh, which is clocked at 1333MHz that, that's so irritating word 1333MHz so I'll remove that stick and then I'll have then I'll be having 8GB of RAM that's sad but anyways I'll adjust some more so after RAM now let's talk about the motherboard which I've got and I have got the Gigabyte B85 D3H motherboard and why I bought this because as I said uh, I bought 4790 
so I had to adjust my budget somewhere. And why I bought this particular motherboard is that this motherboard supports Hackintosh, and I am going to try to build Hackintosh. And it will be very very easy to build Hackintosh on this motherboard. So that's why I am going for B85 D3H. But if your budget is higher, then surely go for uh, Z97 motherboard. Any Z97 motherboard will work, or Z87 will also do. Uh, and if you have lower budget, then there are tons of options to choose from. But see to it that if your case has USB 3.0, then your motherboard also supports USB 3.0. If your motherboard does not support USB 3.0. Then it will be a sad thing that you will not be able to use the 3.0 port on your case. And if you have a higher budget, then make sure that M2.0 is present on the motherboard because of which because of which you will get 10 Gbps of speed if you have SSD of going to that speed. So keep that in mind. And after motherboard, let's talk about the hard disk that I have got. And the main primary thing uh, that's the SSD which I have got is the Samsung 850 Pro SSD. And that's surely one of the fastest drive which you can buy and it has 10 years of warranty. 10 years of warranty. So that's why I went with the SSD and this is the first time that I'm playing around with the SSD. And it's been a month that I'm using SSD and surely I have to say that the SSD is like very very good. Uh, it surely increases the performance of the PC. Boot time is like negligible and with the 12GB of RAM and 4790 the PC boots up in 10 to 15 seconds and it's not like just booting up and it's like after 15 seconds if I click on Chrome then the Chrome opens up immediately or any other application uh, let it be any application it will open up very immediately so it's like it's not just booting up just to show that it has booted up and I do not have to wait after that so SSD surely give very 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 good performance and uh, if you have higher budget then unfortunately there is no other SSD costlier than this or better in performance than uh, Samsung 850 Pro so you may have to stick with 850 Pro there are Intel SSDs but unfortunately they are not available in India as of now at least they will be available soon so you can go for those options or else if you stay in US or uh, some other country then if you have Intel SSDs which are which are having higher speeds then go for Intel SSDs so this Samsung 850 Pro is like having my operating system and the files which I'm going to edit in the software uh, like if I'm editing uh, this video right now then all the footages that I have shot with the camera right now will be in the SSD and I'll be editing that footage through the application which is installed in the SSD so the rendering will be completely in the SSD so it will be like very very fast and surely with the SSD the performance has increased a lot so if you are not having SSD and if you are into video editing then surely I'll suggest you to go for SSD because that's like one of the most important part for video editing PC and now after SSD let's talk about hard disk drives which are like normal hard disk drives and I have got one 1TB one of uh, Western Digital Blue hard drive and I have been using that for 4 to 5 months and it's running very very good no issues whatsoever with that the speeds with the WD Blue are also very good and if you do not have SSD or if you do not want to buy SSD if you do not have budget to buy SSD then do not worry, buy a WD Blue uh, I'll suggest that do not go for WD Black because they are costlier, you get more warranty but the speeds with the WD Blue are more and surely WD Blue is the thing which will come immediately after SSD so if you are not having SSD then surely buy the WD Blue only and that will give you very good performance too and I have one more hard disk that's the Seagate 500GB hard disk and that's a very old hard disk but I do not remember the exact name of that hard disk uh, but let it be anyways I am not going to use that uh, after some time so let it be and after hard disks now let's talk about one of the most important factor of any build that's the power supply because if you buy less voltage of power supply then it will be like the PC won't work that smoothly and if you buy higher voltage power supply then it will be like waste of power also and your money also because it's not going to utilize that much and one more thing that you should keep in mind that uh, before buying any power supply do check that if the power supply has Haswell compatibility because with the Haswell chipset uh, there are some states where the processor will not be using that much power but if the power supply is not Haswell compatible then it may continue to uh, supply extra power which is not needed so, so do check as well compatibility of the power supply and i'll give a link of a thread in the description box below you can check the as well compatibility of the power supply over there 
and sadly i have to say that in india at least you have to go with corset power supplies because seasonic power supplies or any other power supplies are not available in india and the seasonic power supplies which are available in india on the amazon website are like very old power supplies of 2011 or 2010 which are not recommended to use because we are having latest processor and uh, if the power supply is uh, very old then it may not be compatible that well with the processor so do remember that so i had to go with corsair and i went with the corsair 600m uh, m stands for modular and the advantage of having a modular power supply is that you can attach only those cables which are necessary for your rig and all other extra cables can be removed very very easily so that is why i went with modular power supply but if you do not have budget of a modular power supply then you can go with vs power supplies those power supplies are also trusted but the ratings are little low than the modular power supplies and if you have a higher budget uh, then i don't know what to buy in india at least because there is nothing more than modular power supplies that you can buy but don't forget to check how much wattage your rig will need because you don't want to end up buying extra wattage power supply like buying 1000 watt power supply and your system requires only 300 watts then you don't want to do that so i'll give a link in the description box below you can put your components over there on that side and it will give you a rough idea of how much wattage power supply you should buy so do check that out so after power supply now let's talk about the graphics card which i have got and i have got the asus 750 ti graphics card uh, it's a 2gb ddr5 graphics card and it will work very fine for me actually i did not want to buy uh, this graphic card also i wanted to buy a little cheaper one but my brother said that he wants to play games so i got the 750 ti because 750 ti will be good enough to play games at medium settings and at 720p or 1080p uh, so 750 ti is like very good for me and in video editing cpu is one of the most important part so that is why having higher end cpu than the graphics card is always important for video editing rig but if you are someone who want likes to play games then surely i'll suggest you rather than buying i7 buy i5 and buy higher end graphics card because that will improve the games performance tremendously actually graphics card is one of the department in india where you have many many choices so do check all your options and if you don't want to check any options then go for 750 ti because it is working very very fine for me no issues with that and after buying all these components i'll have to put all those components in a case so i bought circle cc830 frankly speaking i wanted to buy the nzxt8440 or the corsair 230d but i was not able to find those cases in uh, online anywhere or even on the lambton road i was not able to find them and that is why i had to go with circle cc830 and surely i do not regret my decision because circle cc830 came out to be very very nice and i have already done the review of it i'll give a link of video review of the circle cc830 in the description box below you can check that out uh, so now let's talk about the performance of the rig so to keep that in numbers i'll say that earlier pc which i had uh, took 17 minutes to render one video uh, which i have rendered on that pc and after i rendered it on this pc it took me 7 minutes so it's like 10 minutes of difference and video editing surely runs very 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 smoothly with this build because 12 gigs of ram 4790 and asus 750 ti and with the 600 watt power supply <laughs> everything runs very smoothly no issues whatsoever and all the games which i ran i did not ran many games i ran only nfs most wanted which almost everyone has in india and the uh, sleeping dogs and mortal combat x all these games ran very very smoothly at high settings also they ran very smoothly i did not try gta 5 because i am yet to get my hands on gta 5 but after i do i surely make a video about that too and if you are interested in benchmarks of this pc then uh, as you can see these are the results of the benchmarks and guys i'll be making a video on each component of the pc like why i bought ssd should you buy ssd or uh, why i bought this power supply why which power supply should you buy which things to consider before buying a motherboard and all these things uh, i have so researched a lot about that so i can say that i know a little bit about that so i'll be make, making a video on all the components that i bought so don't forget to hit that subscribe button for all those videos and all those videos will come one by one so don't forget to hit that subscribe button so this is it for this video guys thank you for watching don't forget to hit the like button for the $1000 rig that i have built rather let me $1000 
it sounds thousand dollar but i am completely completely out of budget and it's like over over my budget and i'll be paying for that later cut and many more pc related videos will be coming shortly on the channel as i said i'll be reviewing each component and i'll be telling you guys how to buy all the components and if you are trying to build a pc then those videos will be surely helpful for you so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video because This is the first time that I have built a PC and made a video on it. So thank you guys, thank you for watching.